Pitt became the sixth team this season to gain the number one ranking in the country. But the Panthers must keep winning to hold on to that top spot. Rutgers meets Pitt for the first time ever as the Scarlet Knights try to become the latest spoiler to knock off number one. Football 81 on the USA Cable Network is brought to you in part by Lowenbrow. When you want the taste of a truly great beer, there's really only one. Tonight, let it be Lowenbrow. By Mobile Detergent Gasoline. Mobile washes dirt away before it accumulates to help maintain your car's performance. And by Toyota, who invites you to see all the 1982 Toyota cars and trucks at your local dealer. Oh, what a feeling to drive a Toyota. USA Cable Network presents College Football 81. Today, from Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey, the number one Pitt Panthers meet the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Hello again, everybody. I'm Stan Saverin, and along with me, Tom Longo, former All-American at Notre Dame and a pro player with the New York Football Giants. And Tom, the number one jinx notwithstanding, does Rutgers have the kind of talent to knock off Pitt today? Well, uh, Stan, on paper, it looks like Rutgers doesn't have the talent to knock off a team uh, like Pittsburgh. But last year, Alabama came into the same stadium. They were ranked number one. Uh, Rutgers lost the game 17-13, but had a chance to win that game. In the last quarter, they were driving for a winning score, but they came up a little bit short. Rutgers has been a team that has been able to come up with a big effort against a good team. So I expect Rutgers to play them a lot closer than it might seem. You know, they say that uh, the number two tries harder, and of course Pitt was number two playing Syracuse and Boston College. Did not play well in either game, could have lost both. Maybe now that they're number one, uh, they'll regain their assertiveness and, and hold on to the ranking. Well, uh, that, Coach Sherrill, in speaking to me yesterday, uh, thought that his team was, was in for a good effort this week. They have been playing complacent the last two weeks. They didn't have a good game against Syracuse or Boston College was very fortunate to win last week. Now they are number one. They're playing against a team that is capable of, uh, of a, a supreme effort to knock off a top team. He feels that they're going to assert themselves today and make a better effort and a better showing. Pitt has the nation's number one defense against the rush. Will Rutgers challenge the defensive line of Pitt, or will they try to throw short and beat them that way? Well, Stan, I figure that the Rutgers game plan would be to show short patterns, use Albert Ray, their excellent running back, who's also an excellent receiver. They don't expect to run against this Pitt defense, so I expect them to use the short passing game and use a lot of motion to get Albert Ray maybe in the secondary and maybe get him one-on-one -on -one with some of these linebackers. All right, Tom, we'll be able to see if this number one jinx will hold. The number one ranked Pitt Panthers against the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. Tom and I will be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment. Scarlet Knights of Rutgers come in with a record of 5-3. and three. The Pitt Panthers, of course, being undefeated, ranked number one in the country with a mark of 7-0. and oh. This is the first time these two teams have ever met in college football history. Pitt with wins over Illinois, Cincinnati, South Carolina, West Virginia, Florida State, Syracuse, and Boston College. Rutgers defeated Syracuse by two. They shut out Virginia 3-0. They then beat Cornell 31-17 to run the record of 3-0, but then lost to Temple 24-12. They beat Colgate, were shut out by Cincinnati. They beat Army and then lost to Alabama. One thing we ought to mention, Tom, uh, the Pitt Panthers, of course, rely primarily on the air game with Dan Marino, one of the nation's top quarterbacks. But uh, Rutgers, rather, has been exceptional at pass defense this year. Yes, they have excellent pass defense. And, uh, of course, with the swirling winds you have here at Giant Stadium, and uh, today the winds are pretty strong, it might be a little problem throwing long. But we know that Dan Marino is capable of throwing that short pass. Uh, but it's going to be a great test for this Rutgers defensive team. And I expect them to not blitz too much, but to cover in the nickel defense. They're going to be dropping off uh, linebackers and also defensive ends into the pass defense to help uh, really curtail this great throwing uh, team of Pittsburgh. 
Alex Falsinelli, number six, will kick off for Rutgers and back deep for Pitt. The middleman will be number 26, Tim Lewis. To the near side, it's number three, Marlon McIntyre, a freshman. And on the far side, number 19, Barry Compton, who is a junior wide receiver, and you will see him a great deal when Pitt goes to the three wide receiver set. Falsinelli kicks off a line drive into the end zone. Lewis will not field it. Hits on a bounce at the back line and goes out, and Pitt on the touchback will take over first down, 10 yards to go at the 20-yard line. And again, as Thomas pointed out, perhaps we best look for the deep drops by the secondary. Uh, how about the linebackers, Tom? They'll then become key if they have to go pass coverage. That's exactly right, Stan. The linebackers are going to be the key to the success of the defense of Rutgers. And when they go into that five-man line, uh, don't be surprised if they don't drop off the uh, defensive end into coverage. Here comes Pitt out in the pro set. Brian Thomas, number 44, Wayne D. Bartola behind him. Marino looking to throw. Fires. It is caught by Julius Dawkins at the 31-yard line. And that'll be good for a first down at the 31-yard line. Long pattern developing as Marino rolled to the right and Dawkins came underneath the coverage to make the catch. Just a, an excellent choice of receivers that time. Dan Marino rolled out to the right side. Uh, there was a man down deep, but uh, he was covered. He looked back to his secondary receiver, Dawkins, and hit him uh, for a first down play. Dawkins is the leading receiver on the pit team. That is his 24th reception of the season. Give inside a deep hard toe to the fullback. He gets a yard out to the 32-yard line. It'll be second down and nine yards to go. One thing about Marino, Tom, if you haven't seen him before, he reads defenses very, very well. He's a very smart quarterback for Junior. He sure is. He's, he did that exactly what you said on the first play. He read the, he read the coverage deep, so he threw to the short man Dawkins. That play was a straight dive uh, to the fullback, Defartola, for a very short game. Second down to nine. Pitt at their own 32-yard line, just underway. I backfield behind Dan Marino. Coverage rotates as Marino goes to throw. Defartola the flat. 34 left, 35, that's it. The last couple of weeks, Marino has gone to the back side of the backfield. Two weeks ago against Syracuse, Steve Barcola caught nine passes. Once again, nothing open deep. He swung it off the flat. That time, uh, from the eye, eye formation, Marino goes back, and uh, Steve Bartolo stands up to block and slides out into the flat. The ball was delivered, but a good play there by the Rutgers defense. Bob. Campaglio made the tackle for a short game. It's third down, seven yards to go for Pitt. Ryan Thomas, very near the first down, but he's going to be short. Stop shy of the 40 yard line, so they try the delay draw on third down and seven. Rutgers defense holds it, standing away from the crowd here at Giant Stadium. That was a fourth down, two yards to go, and David Heppel will go in the punt, averaging 40.8 yards per kick. Not a good kick in the win. at the 40-yard line. So Rutgers, Tom, starts out in good field position. Excellent field position. And, of course, the wind again being a factor. The kick was held up by the wind. It'll give Rutgers good field position. Stay on that fourth, uh, on the third down play. They ran the ISO up the middle. There was a good opening, but the running back, uh, number 44, Byron Thompson, actually stumbled. He had the first down had he not stumbled. Well, Rutgers takes over now. First down, 10 yards to go. Hudak. Draw a play to rain. He does not get back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second out and 10. Albert Ray, the leading rusher on this football team, with 579 yards, averaging four yards per carry. Pretty much uh, the bulk, uh, the nucleus of the Rutgers offense. He sure is, and he's also the leading receiver on this Rutgers team. We look for him to do a lot of running and a lot of uh, pass receiving today's game. Second out and 10. I backfield behind Budak. to throw. Flares out to Hooper to the 45 down to the 49. Good call in this situation. The screen play to the left side. The hard charging pit line comes in. He dumps off to number 43. Hooper makes an excellent run. He comes up a little bit short of that first down. An excellent call for Rutgers. Down and very short yardage to go. 10 to 2 comes in the ball game. Number 32, a fullback. Short yardage situation. Third down, two yards to go. Only one man as they go to a slot either side. Now they come back in a pro set. 
Give to the fullback. He's got the first down. Hooper into pit territory at the 48-yard line. So Rutgers picks up the initial first down of the game and a good start for the Scarlet Knights. It's an excellent start. That was a great piece of running by number 43, Hooper. Uh, he was actually met at the line of scrimmage. He slid off one tackler and made the, the extra two yards for the first down. And as you said, Stan, they're now in pit territory. An excellent opportunity to put some points on his board. Just outside the 47-yard line, Hudak at quarter. He's back to throw after a play fake. Looks over the middle, almost intercepted and knocked away. Sal Sinceri, the pit linebacker, knocked the pass away, and it's an incompletion. Second down and 10 yards to go. Again, an excellent call on first down. He fakes the delay, he threw the, he threw the sweep pass to the back, but an excellent play on the part of number 66, Sal Sinceri, who, who uh, knocked down that pass. Uh, it would have been good for a, a long game, but an excellent play by the linebacker, Sinceri. Second down and 10, Eric Johnson, 87, wide to the far side. Receiver split on either side. Second down and 10, now Ray shifts out of the pro and back to the eye. Hudak to throw. On the flat and knocked down. Al Wiglikowski knocked the pass down. And there's a case, Tom, where Hudak, perhaps through inexperience, should have lofted the ball over the defensive end. That's right. No chance at all to complete that pass the way he was uh, thrown that straight ahead. He should have lofted that pass. Alvin Ray was open in the flat. Had he been able to get the ball to him, uh, he had some running room, possibly could have picked up a first down. There you look at the pit defense, ranked fourth overall in defense in the country, number one against the rush. Although Boston College did rough up the pit defense a bit last week up in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. Now they're in a double wing, Budak rolling. He fires, man open, and it's caught, but only for a five-yard gain. Albert Ray makes the reception at the 42, brings up fourth down and five yards to go out of field goal range. So we'll expect to see Gary Liska, the Rutgers putter averaging 38.7 yards per kick, and back deep for the Pitt Panthers, number five, Tom Flynn, who has returned a touchdown, 83 yards on a punt return against Florida State. is with it, swirling around Giant Stadium. Almost a high snap. He's got a rush on, gets it away. Ball hits the nine-yard line and rolls into the end zone. Line drive, and it'll be a touchback. So once again, Pitt will start over first and 10 at their own 20. Early in the first quarter, Pitt nothing, Rutgers nothing. We'll be right back. Toyota Supra and Dan Gurney. It takes the right stuff to make a great performance car. Come ride with Dan Gurney and see. It's quick off the line. That's the twin cam fuel injected engine. Now let's see the independent four wheel suspension in action. Handles well. Nice brake. The new Toyota Celica Supra. That's the right stuff. Supra. This Friday night, November 13th, all the action and thrills of the major indoor soccer league return to the USA Network when the three-time MISL champion New York Arrows take on the expansion New Jersey Rockets at the new Brendan Byrne Arena. Instant excitement, non-stop indoor soccer at its best. Be with us Friday night, November 13th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, the Arrows and the Rockets, MISL Soccer on the USA Network. Pitt was unable to pick up a first down in their first possession of the game. Stopping short, forcing a punt. First down and 10 now, Pitt at their own 20-yard line. Give inside, Brian Thomas has a hole and gets out to the 25-yard line for a nice game. Out to the 25. Bob C.M. Paglia makes the stop. Strong safety number 37. This uh, Rutgers defensive line uh, so far, Tom, has been susceptible to the running game. They have, and, and I think that uh, Pitt uh, has decided they're going to attack the running game first. They came out passing right away. They aren't a passing team, but they feel they can run against this team, and uh, that was indication they had a six-yard gain on the first play. Brian Thomas, a junior who did not play much in his freshman and sophomore years, is now the Panthers' leading rush with over 600 yards. Marino out the flat to Thomas. Got the first down out to the 32-yard line. And as I mentioned, when teams began dropping deep on Pitt, Tom, Marino began to read the coverage and has dumped off a great deal to his backs deep bar toll and Brian Thomas. That was Thomas' 20th catch of the year. 20th catch for over 200 yards. All it was a little flare pattern to the back. Uh, Marino very cool step 
stepped back and just lofted a perfect pass, picked up the first down. The initial first down of the game for Pitt. They're at their own 33, no score in the first quarter. Thomas, left side, got a hole, 40, 45, 50. He's in a Rutgers territory and finally caught from behind and a flag is down. At the 34, we may have a face mask which will march it down even further. Good running by Brian Thomas. This is an excellent piece of running stand that tie from the eye formation. As you know, they read the hole. He read the hole outside. He slid outside. He was actually uh, in the arms of a tackler on about the 50-yard line. He broke that tackle, went down to the 45-yard line, and there was a penalty assessed. It'll bring the ball all the way down to the 15, about the 19-yard line, a first down for Pitt. Face mask for the call as the tacklers went over the back and got a piece of that face mask. So Pitt on two plays with the football from the other, their own 33 down to the Rutgers 19 yard line. First down, 10. Deepark Tolo the hole off the right side. He's inside the 15 and near the 14 yard line for a gain of five. It'll be second down and five yards to go. Nine and a half to play first quarter. This is a straight dive play to the fullback. Deepartola picked up good yardage. And it's very interesting now that down inside the 15 yard line and, and Pitt really has 21 touchdowns by the pass and only six by the running game. So we're probably going to see a pass coming up now from this split backfield. Second down and five at the Rutgers 14. Pitch wide, Thomas. Hit at the line of scrimmage and a good defensive play made by Ken Versier, who came in and made the tackle, stopping Thomas for no gain when it looked like he had some room to run. At time, they tried to get outside, and a, and a great effort on the part of Ken Versier, number 91, has been an outstanding linebacker for Rutgers for the past three seasons. Now you have a third and uh, long situation for Pitt. Right, Dwight Collins goes wide to the left, number 32, and Dawkins is split to the right. They like to throw the alley-oop from the corner of the end zone from here, out of the pro set to the eye. Marino has audible, now back to the pro. And there's going to be a motion penalty called against Pitt. The pass is incomplete for Dawkins. But Brian Thomas did not set for the one second time. Obviously, the penalty will be declined. That's right, and uh, it'll bring up a fourth down situation, and Pitt will go for a field goal. But uh, it's too bad because uh, Dawkins was in the open. Uh, Marino saw the motion penalty, really took a little bit off that pass. He knew it was going to be a penalty. As you said, it was declined. Rutgers uh, has held, and uh, the Pitt Panthers will try for a field goal now. This will be Snuffy Everett. He's a freshman from Mississippi, so he, I hope he's wearing long underwear because he's not used to this. Everett is four out of nine. He has not been an active field goal kicker. He does have this kind of a range. Snuffy Everett, side Mississippi. This will be a 32-yarder with an angle to left. Bad snap. Everett comes over the football. He fumbles it, and Rutgers has the football. Take it over at the 35-yard line. Jim Dumont, who has been injured, starting inside linebacker, came up with the recovery. Actually, it really didn't make any difference who fell on the ball. It was right. going to be Rutgers anyway. And you know, it's, it's something Jim Dunn, Dunn, Dumont, 53, who was played in his first game in quite a while, comes up with the fumble recovery. A great, a big play for Rutgers. This should give them some momentum. Well, they get it at the 31-yard line. So Dumont comes over the recovery pit box, the field goal, and back to throw his hood at. He's got room to the left to run if he wants to. He decides to throw, and he finds a man wide open. 50. He's at the 40, and Ray is down to the pit 40-yard line with a first down. Quarterback Keith Hudak came very close to crossing the line of scrimmage, but he got it off behind the line of scrimmage, found Ray all alone in the center of the field. It's a big game from the 31 to the 40. It'll be a gain of 29 yards and a first down. Just a, an outstanding effort by Keith Hudak, the young quarterback. He's not a runner, but he came very close, as you said, to uh, crossing the line. He spotted Albert Ray in the secondary, completed the pass, a long gain all the way down to the pit 40. First down and 10 yards to go. Receiver split on either side. Give to Ray, left tackle, not much room, but he does manage to gain about three yards down to the pit 37 yard line, making it second down and seven. Just a little counter play that time. And as we said in the opening of this game, that uh, in order for Rutgers to score and to win this game, they had to rely on Albert Ray's running and pass receiving. Thus far, they have been moving the ball, and uh, a lot of times, Albert Ray has been the reason. 
It would also seem to me that with the wind at their back and a strong one as is, with Pitt perhaps reluctant to air it out against the wind, that it's imperative for Rutgers to score in the first quarter before Pitt gets the win. I think so, Stan, and uh, they are doing a good job now, and they're very close uh, to a score. Slot left, Hudak to throw, got a man open. He fires, and it is caught by Albert Ray at the 31-yard line. He'll be about a half yard shy of that first down. Coming over to make the tackle, Sal Sinceri, Tom Flynn, and Rick Freinach. Third down and one yard to go. An excellent call again. It's a semi-roll to the left side. He spots Albert Ray in the flat. He delivers the ball right on target. A good gain, and just a little short now of the first down for Ruckus. It's about third and one. An excellent call, excellent reception by Albert Ray. Now, he's really got a two-down territory here. A little bit far for a field goal. Into the pro set. Give to Hooper, got the first down, and down to the 27 yard line. Hooper, averaging 4.3 yards per carry, picks up the first down, and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights are on the march. Six and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. We are scoreless. Again, another good read by Hooper that time. That play was designed to go off the right side, but he saw a little light daylight to the left. He slid back to the left. Picked up the necessary yards for the first down. It's now first down on the 28-yard line of pit. Eric Johnson, wide left. Andrew Baker, wide to the right. Lone setback is Hooper. Here's Hooper. It's going to be a flea flicker. Hudak, he fires in the end zone. Nobody's really open. And it is incomplete, almost intercepted. It was intended for Andrew Johnson, but the ball was batted up in the air. There were four Pitt Panthers, Tim Lewis, Tom Flynn around the football, but nobody could come up with it. That time, 81, uh, Andrew Baker was downfield, but there was a little mix-up in the in the handoff to the fullback. By the time Hudak got the football, the defensive man had, uh, had, had gained his composure, had gotten back with Baker. The ball was thrown up, and uh, unfortunate for Pittsburgh, they should have been able to intercept that pass. The play was a bit slow in developing and really lost its major thrust, which of course is deception. Second down and 10. Pitt shows blitz and it's going to be offside. Speaking of deception, there wasn't much there. That's uh, banging a guy in the head with a board. We're coming. But they came too soon. Of course, Sunseri is just an excellent uh, linebacker. Two sacks, two interceptions, and 68 tackles this year. He's a very aggressive player, and that time a little bit too over-aggressive. And he is the inspirational leader of the defense. Uh, the Pitt Panthers, here they are, 7-0, Tom. They're ranked number one, yet they only start four seniors, two on offense, two on defense. So, by and large, they're an underclassman team. Sunseri is a senior, and he's kind of the leader of this entire outfit. It's understandable when you have uh, 15 or so players from last year's team in the, in the pro ranks. You can understand they have a young team. Second down and five yards to go with a penalty. Obviously a great aid to Rutgers at that point. High backfield. Give inside to Hooper. He's got one through. He's to the 15-yard line, and he's got a first down for the Scarlet Knights. Wayne Hooper, a freshman who had come into the game with 263 yards, picking up yardage and ice chunks, gives Rutgers a first down. Just an excellent fake this time by the Kodak. Kodak, he'll fake the pitch out, hands off to Hooper, and again, Hooper will cut across the grain, picks up excellent yards, and another first down for Rutgers. And again, Albert Ray made that play work. They're so conscious of Albert Ray on the outside, they're leaving the middle open, and Hooper's doing a good job of running inside. Here's a give inside to Hooper. He runs into his own man and fumbles the football, and Pitt is recovered. Wayne Hooper took the ball inside. He bumped into his own man, fumbled the football, and the first major scoring threat of the game is stopped on a pit fumble. Recovery. Just an unfortunate uh, situation for Rutgers. The play looked like it might develop, but because of the pressure by the defensive line of Pitt, the back ran into his man, causing the fumble and giving Pitt a big turnover because they definitely were in field goal, goal range that time. Pete George was the left guard pulling on the play, and he and Hooper collided. Here comes Pitt to give to Brian Thomas, who cracks his way across the 20 and out near the 22-yard line for a gain of five. It'll be second down and five yards to go. It seemed in that drive, Tom, that Rutgers has pretty much admitted, look, we can't block Pitt head on. A lot of traps, a lot of counters, a lot of maneuvering on the line of scrimmage. As we said, Stan, a lot of motion. They have to get outside. They have to do something razzle-dazzle. They just can't go straight ahead against this team. And so far, they've been very effective. Marino, delayed draw to Dean Bartola. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that is all. No gain. It'll be third down and five yards to go. And it would appear obvious at this point that 
Jackie Sherrill, the head coach of the Panthers, is not going to throw into that wind. He's going to try to grind it out on the ground. It seems that way, Stan, and uh, Rutgers uh, seems to be playing the run a little bit better now. They they, they came up fast that time to stop that, that delay by DeBartola. They have a third down now and about five yards to go, and wouldn't be surprised to see Marino Sean throw that short pattern to Dawkins. Dawkins flip right, Collins left. Pitt comes out in an eye. Now it goes back to the pro set as Marino calls an audible. Third down and five. No pressure. Fires over the middle, and it is incomplete. Good coverage on the play, offered by Carl Howard, who came over and tipped the football away. And Pitt once again will be forced to punt. Good coverage. You can see the coverage developing, Tom. Rutgers had it all the way. They were playing that play. It seemed like they had two defenders uh, defending against Dawkins that time. Uh, number 26, Carl Howard. Number 37, Bob Campaglio. Both were back there. Actually, the ball should not have been thrown. They should have threw the ball away because uh, there was a definite chance of interception that time, and uh, that was not real good judgment on the part of Marino. Mark Seeger is back deep for Rutgers, standing at about his own 47-yard line. Again, Hepler averaging nearly 41 yards per kick on the season. Good snap. Big rush on. He gets it away. He's hit, but there is no flag. That's a very short kick, and it is down at the 36-yard line. The pit sideline would like to get a rough in the kicker call. None will be forthcoming. When we come back, Rutgers will take over at the pit 36. No score in the first quarter. After the rush kick by David Hepler, Rutgers takes over just outside the pit 35-yard line. Excellent field position. First down and 10. Give inside to Hooper. A little bit of running room inside the 35 down to the 34. It'll be a gain of one. The flag goes down, and I believe Tom Pitt is going to be hit with unnecessary roughness as we get a bit of a beef going on with Pappy Thomas, the left quarterback, number nine of the Panthers. Pappy Thomas did come in a little bit late, and that's exactly what it is. A roughing call against Pitt, something they do not need now. Rutgers down on the 35-yard line. You'll see the, the handoff uh, to Hooper inside. This time, Pitt is not fooled. He's going down, and That's you'll see Rick. number nine, Happy Thomas, come in. It was a late hit. It was a good call. Rick Cranach, number 55, made the tackle on the plate. Forward progress was obviously stopped. They had him stood straight up, and, of course, Thomas came in with the late shot. First time you played at Notre Dame, you weren't an underdog all that often when you played there, but how much steam will it take out of the Rutgers team after fumbling away one opportunity, and what will happen if they don't score here? Well, if they don't score here, then it's going to be a long afternoon. You can't get down here against a great team like Pitt and have two or three chances and not come up with any points. So it's very apparent they score now. Give Terrain running room to 15, to 10, and a first down at the 8-yard line. Albert Ray over right tackle with some fancy running. Picks up 11 yards and a first down to the pit 8-yard line. Just uh, again, Stan, a good block at the point of attack. Good fake inside the handoff. This Albert Ray is a good hole, but he makes a lot of this on his own effort. A good spin, eluding two or three tackles. Picks up the first down. Just an excellent piece of running by Albert Ray. Spun out of tackles by Rick Cranach and Troy Hill. 11-yard pickup. It'll be first down and goal just outside the 8-yard line. Right now, I would say Rutgers has the momentum. They were very much in this game. Here's a reverse. Coming to Eric Johnson. Maintains his speed, but he's going to be hit. Pushed out of bounds for a loss. The handoff on the reverse, Tom, was not smooth. Andrew Baker never really got his feet and stumbled a bit, almost went down there, and will lose five There's yards the fake on the play. On the inside and the handoff. It's almost a fumble here, and it causes the end coming around to slow up just a little bit, giving a, uh, number five, Tom Flynn, to come up and make a good stop and also throws it for a loss. Well, you don't want to be caught in this position. Second down and goal just inside the 13. Now you almost have to throw to get it in there. We might Johnson look for left, Baker right. Second and goal from the 13-yard line. Budak in a roll. He's going to run it to the 10 and back to the original line of scrimmage, the 8-yard line. Not a bad play by Hudak because he really had nobody open, and he picked up what he lost on the first down. Just, just an excellent play. Uh, you'll see Hudak go back, looks downfield. There's, there's nobody open. He decides to run because he's getting tremendous pressure by that pit line. A good judgment here on his part to take the ball upfield. Picks up pretty good yardage all the way down to the nine-yard line. An outstanding play by Hudak. 
And a good tackle by defensive end Al Wengelkowski because he had to come from the backside to make the tackle. So now it is third down and goal from the eight-yard line. Throwing in the end zone. He's got a man open, overthrown, intended for Andrew Baker in the corner of the end zone. Coverage on the play provided by Tim Lewis, but he was open for a while, so that'll bring on Alex Falsinelli, who this year is 10 out of 11 in field goals. And for him, it'll be a relative chip shot. It should be, Stan, but again, with the swirling winds here at Giant Stadium, nothing is automatic today, but they do have the wind at their backs, but you just have to watch out with the swirling winds, which can affect a kick uh, quite, uh, quite a lot here at Giant Stadium. Again, he is 10 out of 11. This will be a 27-yard field goal with a wide angle to the left side. Ball's down. Kick is up. And it is good. So a 27-yard field goal by Alex Falsinelli has Rutgers on the board. We've got two minutes to play in the first quarter. Rutgers has gone on top. As we said before, Stan, it was very important for them to get at least three points on this drive. It's two minutes to go in this quarter. The next quarter, they will have uh, the wins at their face. So it was very important for them to score with the wind at their backs. Had they not been able to put a uh, score on the board at that time, I think it would have been completely demoralizing to this Rutgers team. i got to ask you about this, Tom, though. The call on first down. You're at the eight-yard line, which means the defense only has 18 yards to protect. Can you really get the secondary deep enough to run that kind of reverse? Because they don't they don't have that much room to react. Well, I guess it was an unexpected call, and I think if the handoff had been uh, a little quicker and hadn't been fumbled, he might have had a chance for a big gainer. But as you know, that play either goes for a long game or no gain at all. And this time, uh, Tom Flynn, number five, made an excellent play, came up and made the tackle and threw the end around for a loss. But uh, I saw that same play work against Alabama last year for a score. So he must have been remembering last year. First, Rutgers comes into this game, everything to gain, nothing to lose. They're playing the number one team in the country, and you pull out all the stops, right. especially when you're at home. It's a lot easier to, to play loose for Rutgers than for a team like Pitt, who has uh, been voted number one this week, has not been playing up to capabilities, and is playing against a team that really, on paper, does not seem to match up against them. But as you said, Rutgers comes in very loose, and Frank Burns, great coach of Rutgers, has a way of bringing his teams up for these important games. Tim Lewis, the deep man in the triple safety, he is averaging 26 yards a kickoff return. Here it comes. Line drive into the end zone. Lewis will take it. Bob will look and stay in there with it. And it'll be another touchback. So the kicking game, Alex Falsinelli hitting line drives, but hitting it deep enough so Pitt does not have a chance to return. He's just, just an excellent kicker, and he has kicked a 45-yard field goal this year. He's capable of kicking 50 yards. And again, Pitt, with four, poor field position, will be starting at their 20-yard line. That's been... Uh, a big reason for their ineffective uh, this on offense this first quarter, although they had that good drive that was stopped because of the miscue on the, on the field goal. Pitt once again will start for this 20. They have not been able to get out of the hole. Ryan Thomas, left tackle, powers his way across the 25 for a gain of a bit more than five. It'll be second down and five yards to go. We talk about the kicking game. Let's not forget that the Rutgers field goal was set up on a 14-yard punt by Dave Hepler after a strong rush. Second down and five yards to go as the clock runs in the first quarter with a minute and a half to play. Rutgers leading 3 to nothing on a 27-yard field goal by Alex Falsonet. Second and five. Deep Bartola, not much. Gets out to the 28-yard line where it'll be third down and two yards to go. And I don't think there's much doubt, Tom, that Jackie Sherrill is keeping the best button until the quarters change and he gets the win. It's very obvious they are very conservative for Pitt, a team that probably throws uh, two out of every three downs. That time they ran two basic running plays, the first two downs, uh, a little over a minute to play in this quarter. I think he's feeling that uh, he wants to get that win at his back. Power eye to the right and a pitch wide to Brian Thomas. Got the first down at the 30-yard line. He barely got it, but he got it. He's about six inches over that 30-yard line. It'll be a first down for Pitt. It's a great effort uh, on the part of uh, Jim Dumont again, number 63, who came uh, number 53, excuse me, who came across and uh, almost stopped uh, Thomas for lose short of the first down, but Thomas was able to scramble forward for that first down. But this Dumont uh, has been quite an outstanding defensive player for Rutgers, and uh, his return this year, this game, has meant a lot to Rutgers. First down and 10 pit. Here's Thomas again to the left side. Hit at the line of scrimmage and dropped for a one-yard loss. 
good defensive play by right end Ken Versier, also strong safety Bob Campaglia, who came up from that strong safety shot to throw Thomas for a one-yard loss. Just an, an outstanding play by the uh, free safety, 37 Bob Campaglia, who came up and knocked Thomas off stride, enabling Versier, number 91, to make the tackle for a one-yard loss. Well, Pitt is not going to run another play. There's only five seconds to go in the quarter. They could have gotten one off, but they want the win, and they will now have it. We'll see what they do as Pitt comes back. They are trailing in the ball game. They have not played well the last couple of weeks. The number one jinx right now is in effect. End of the first quarter. The score, Rutgers three and Pitt nothing. Pitt has the wind at their backs. Let's see if they open it up just a bit. Reno to throw. Got time. Fires over the middle, and it's intercepted. Dumont at the 30 bubbles the football falls on his own bubble and it'll be Rutgers football at the 31 yard line. Jim Dumont made the interception for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. May well have been on his way to a touchdown, dropped the football. Exactly right, Stan. This time from the pro slot right. Marino, plenty of time back there. Throws the ball right in the arms of number 53, Jim Dumont, who makes an excellent run, fumbles the ball but gets it back, and a first down for Rutgers on the 31-yard line. A very, very big turnover for Rutgers. First down and 10 Rutgers to the 31-yard line, and again, they start off in excellent field position. They're overloaded to the right side. Ray is the man in motion to the near side. Rolling, Hudak, he looks, he fires, it is caught at the 20-yard line. And it'll be close to a first down. Eric Johnson made the reception for the Scarlet Knights, and he's got that first down at the 20-yard line. First down and 10 yards to go for the Scarlet Knights. Just an excellent call. A first down, a running pass. He's got three receivers in the same zone there. He hits number 87, Eric Johnson, for the first down. Good throw by Hudak, good reception by Johnson, and a first down for Rutgers. I'll tell you what, Tom, he had Brian Crockett all alone at the goal line. He didn't see him. First down and 10 yards to go. Rutgers to the pit 20. Hooper got low. He's the pad. He fumbles the football. And is recovered by Pitt at the three-yard line. Dwayne Hooper was on his way possibly to a touchdown. He was hit. And fumbled the football. Salison Seri recovered for the Panthers at the three-yard line. Again, an excellent run, but a good fake uh, this time. Uh, Kudak fakes the pitch out to Albert Ray. Hooper cuts back up the middle. Looks like he might go all the way. Gets tackled here, fumbles the ball, and Pitt, very fortunately, picks up the loose football, and they will get the ball back on the three-yard line. Happy Thomas was the man, number nine, who made the hit and forced Hooper to cough up the football. Pitt has the ball at their own three-yard line. Give inside to Brian Thomas, who gets his way out to the seven or near the eight-yard line. It'll be a nice gain of nearly five yards to bring up second down and five yards to go. This is the second time that Rutgers has given up an opportunity to score. Sal Sinceri leading the Panthers in tackles. He is the inspirational leader, and he made a big play there, recovering the fumble. But equally big, of course, was the hit by Pappy Thomas, who forced the fumble when Rutgers would have had a first and goal inside the ten. Second down, a little bit more than five yards to go. Thomas tries to go outside, cannot get there, out to the nine-yard line. It'll be third down and four yards to go. And a pair of 64s square off and a little bit of a shoving match. A couple of sumo wrestlers. Mike Rustemeyer, the defensive tackle, was uh, banging a few people around. He's doing uh, Rob Feta. He's quite an outstanding athlete, Rustemeyer. He's played an outstanding ball for us for the past three years. Uh, 91 Ken Vizier also went on that tackle. They've just been outstanding for Rutgers this afternoon. Jim Dumont is the man down on the field, and of course he made the interception and has been the leader of the Rutgers defense. Jackie Sherrill, 46, 8, and 1 in his sixth year at the University of, uh, or fifth year at the University of Pittsburgh. He did coach one year at Washington State, and he already, Tom, has the best winning percentage in the history of the University of Pittsburgh, and we're talking about Jock Sutherland, and we're talking about Johnny Mays, and some other people. He's quite an outstanding coach, and I remember him in his college days when he played at Alabama. Did you ever butt heads with him? You played against him. No, we didn't play against him, but uh, he beat us out for the national championship in 64. We went into the final game against Southern California, number one in the country, and Alabama was undefeated, and so were we. We lost to Southern California, and his team was voted the national championship in 64. Here is a big play, third down and four, pit of their own nine-yard line. Thomas. 
gets out and is hit at the 13 and knocked out of bounds at the 13. It'll all depend on the spot. Where are they going to spot the football as to whether or not he made the first down? I believe he is going to be a bit short. Keith Wotzel came in, coming in for Dumont to knock him out of bounds. And they're going to call it fourth down. They're not even going to call for the measurement. So Rutgers, after giving up the football, forces Pitt to punt. And Hepler, who last kick got off a 14-yarder, which set up the Rutgers field goal, the only score of the game, to get it away. He does, and this time it's a good one. Bouncing in Rutgers territory. Seeger at the 40, looks for a block, nothing coming. He's hammered down at his own 41-yard line. Nevertheless, good field position for the Scarlet Knights. So, Rutgers holds on to their lead with 13-11 to play in the half. Rutgers three and pit nothing. Rutgers at their own 41-yard line, leading three nothing. Kind of a delay, and uh, it was a scramble for the football. That play will not be in anybody's blackboard. <laughs> when the season is over, unless it's for defense. Uh, mishandle all the way, no game. Second out of 10 yards to go, and you've got to wonder, Tom, Rutgers has been con in control of this football game, and yet they lead only three to nothing, and they have given away two scoring opportunities. Very, very good point, uh, Stan. Uh, as, as you have said, they have had a lot of opportunities that they've missed, and against the number one team and a great team like Pitt, you can't miss uh, these opportunities. It's gonna come back and haunt them, I think, in the second half. Hudak to Hooper. He'll get a couple out to the 43 and make a third down, eight yards to go. You know, Stan, it's, it's very obvious that uh, Rutgers has become a little conservative now. They are running into the into the wind. They sort of gone away from their first quarter tactics of throwing that first down of a lot of motion. They seem to be trying to run inside, trying to maybe uh, wind down the clock a little bit in the second quarter because they know that they are going against the wind. But I think they have to stick with their game plan. They got to throw the ball. They have to continue doing what they have been doing in the first quarter. Well, they should be throwing it here on third down and eight yard. Pit on a blitz. Hudak is hit and dropped for a loss. Bill Maz came in and made a strong hit. Klainak on a blitz. Also, Al Wenglikowski from the defensive end spot comes in and got Hudak before he really had an opportunity to set up. And it's a loss of five on the play. It'll bring up fourth down and long. And once again, it'll force a punt. There's the pressure against Pitt. The, the, just about the entire defensive line in on Hudak. He had no chance at all to get back for the pass. And Rutgers will have to punt the ball back to Pitt. Liska gets away a line drive, but very low. Not a good kick. It's bounding at the 35. Good roll. The 30. Inside the 30 and down at the Pitt 26 yard line. So considering the way Liska got it off, he gets a pretty decent punt out of it. Pitt will take over at their own 26, and this indeed is the best field position Pitt has started from in the football game. And you know, you talk about Rutgers going against the wind in the second quarter. Really, Tom, with their tight passing game, the wind really shouldn't affect them at all. That's right, Stan, and they throw the short pads and the little flare patterns, so they should be able to throw against uh, this wind here. Now we've got movement. Right offensive tackle, Bill Fralick raised up. And the defensive end came across the line. Andy Carino came across, and they're going to call it against Pitt. It was a legal motion. Bill Fralick, one of the most highly recruited freshman linemen in the country. Everybody was after him, raised up on the play. It'll cost them five and move it back to the 21, make it first down and 15 yards to go. And there you see the Pitt offensive coaches giving the signals. That's Andy Urbanic. He is giving the signals to Dan Marino. That's how they call the plays. Andy Urbanic, a very highly successful high school coach, in the Pittsburgh area, and Jackie Sherrill added him to his staff this year. Matter of fact, Urbanic was the coach of Tom Flynn, the Pitt starting safety. Thomas, right tackle, got a hole, gets outside, out to the 30 and near the 33-yard line. Well, it's a gain of 12. He got the penalty back and more, and it'll bring up second down and about five yards to go as Brian Thomas continues to run well. Again, off the, the ISO off tackle play, you'll see Brian Thomas make a, an excellent effort to get outside. He sees no room inside. He'll slide it to the outside. Exactly what the eye back has to do. Picks up excellent yardage, and now they have a, a second down and about five yards to go for the first. Nice gain after getting the penalty. Three yards, actually. Marino fakes and bootlegs left. Lockers in front, fires the sideline. It is incomplete and intercepted by Rutgers. and Mike Knight came up with the football. Mike Knight, number 58, caught the deflection after Dwight Collins 
And frankly, Tom Collins hot dogged it on the play. He had no reason to jump up in the air and it cost him a catch and the football. Exactly. Wide open. The pass was delivered perfectly right on the letters. Collins had a chance to pick that ball away and possibly gain good yardage. But you'll see the ball bounce off his chest as he jumps up in the air right into the arms of number 58, Mike Knight, makes the recovery. A big turnover again for this Rutgers team. But can Rutgers take advantage? Thus far, they have not been able to. First down and 10 at the pit, 39-yard line. Hooper, get at the line of scrimmage, and he'll die at the line of scrimmage. No game. Once again, Rutgers using a lot of traps, a lot of counters, but this time, the pit defensive line able to slide over and make the tackle, getting good penetration. It'll bring up second down and 10 yards to go, and once again, Rutgers has the opportunity to really take hold of this game. They certainly do stand. At that time, the defensive line stayed at home. They did not go for the fake to Albert Ray around the outside. They played the inside running game very well at time and stopped Tupper for no gain. Wing left, Budak pressured, fires in the flat, and it is incomplete, and we're going to get a flag. Pass interference. No doubt about that one. On Rick Cranach. They got tangled up, and the referee, the official, stood there for a long time before he finally threw the flag on Cranach. Pass interference. It'll be a first down for the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. That definitely was uh, contact before the, the ball had passed the receiver. I don't know if Albert Ray would have been able to make that reception, but number 55, Rick Cranach, certainly interfered with Albert Ray. An unfortunate uh, play for Cranach, but an important play for Rutgers. And a, and a, and a uh, first down for them now on the 42-yard line. We'll make it the 37-yard line. And it's a big play because it would have been third down and 10 yards to go. High backfield behind Hudak on the first down play. Hudak fakes. He's hit and dropped for a big loss back outside the 45. They were looking to set up the reverse once again, but tremendous penetration by Michael Woods from his right defensive end just gummed up the play totally. Definitely Pittsburgh was aware of this play. They tried the end around again, and you'll see great penetration. Nowhere, even, not even a chance for Hudak to hand the ball off. A big loss and a big, big play for Pitt. A play they needed very desperately at this moment. I'll tell you who made the play. Tom Johnson, the defensive tackle, got the pitch man. Took him out of the play, and Hudak had to eat it. It is a big loss of 12 yards. It'll be second down and 22 yards to go. Hudak with a straight drop. Pass the flat to Hooper. Looking for a blocker. Does not find one. Gets back to midfield. It'll be a gain of a couple, but it'll still bring up third down and about 21 yards to go for that first down. You got to keep an eye on Dan Short because he really plays aggressively. He comes up very strong from the strong safety as he should. Excellent uh, play on the part of the entire pit defense that time. They were not fooled at all. Hooper slid into the flat. There were three or four defensive men for pit waiting for him. And again, uh, there was another loss. And now it brings up third and very long yardage. Michael Woods, a junior, with eight sacks on the year. We'll get an opportunity here. Third down, 22 yards to go. No, sir. Hand off to Hooper. Tries to get outside. He's not going anywhere. May have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. And Rutgers pretty much uh, threw in the towel on that one. Michael Woods made the tackle. So once again, a pit turnover deep in their own territory. Rutgers is not able to take advantage. In fact, they started the series the 39. They end up at their own 49, so they lose 12 yards on the exchange. And it'll be Liska coming in to punt. Tom Flynn back deep. Liska punting against the wind last time. He got off a low line drive, but got a bounce. Flynn stands at his own 22-yard line. The wind right in the face of Lisco. Gets off a beauty. Flynn will let it go. Bounces at the five-yard line, and they'll be down by Rutgers at the four. Good punt coverage by the Scarlet Knights, and once again, Pitt is in a hole. Surlis makes the down, and Pitt will start out deep in their own territory. 7.51 to play in the half. The score, Rutgers 3, Pitt nothing. Well, Pitt has seen too much of their own end zone so far this afternoon. Pitch wide to Brian Thomas, looking for a block outside. He's hit at the line of scrimmage and dives forward for a couple out to the seven-yard line for a gain of two. It'll be second down and eight yards to go, and field position has been a key to this game. It's been a big key, and again, uh, now in, in the field position they have now, Pittsburgh has to be very careful not to 
commit another turnover to give Rutgers a chance for a field goal or a score now, which would put the game uh, pretty much uh, in Rutgers' hands at 10 0 So it's very important that they maintain some kind of consistency here in offense, get, pick up a couple of first downs, and if they don't score, get the ball out of this poor, poor field position. Second down and eight. Once again, the eye backfield. Give inside the deep Artola. Got a hold of the 15, out to the 20, and across the 25 to the 26 yard line. And that gets fit out of that hole. Good run by Wayne DiBartola. He picks up 19 yards in the carry and will give Pitt a first down outside the 25 to the 26. Excellent call, good bacon on the part of Marino. An excellent piece of running by DiBartola. You'll see him cut to the right, then back to the left, left, and he'll again cut to the right. Picks up excellent yards, yardage, and a first down. It gets Pitt out of very, very poor field position. Marino to throw. A clip drop. Pass intended for a back out of the backfield for Brian Thomas. And perhaps it's just as well that he did not catch the football as middle guard Ray Moore was on the coverage, floating laterally, and probably would have dropped Brian Thomas for a loss. So it's incomplete. It brings up second and ten. No doubt about that. Uh, number 99, Ray Moore, was right there. The play looked like it might develop, but 99 slipped behind a couple of blockers and had the ball been uh, caught, he would have been thrown for a loss. Second and ten. Marino has a lot of freedom as a quarterback. He's allowed to check off whenever he wants. Thomas tries to get outside and runs right into the arms of Andy Carino. He'll get a yard. Then it'll make it second down to nine, a third down to nine. Mike Rustemeyer also went on the tackle. Good play that time by number 64, Rustemeyer, number 55, Andy Carino. This time, Brian looks to go outside, but he should have cut up that time. It was a bad judgment on his part. He tries to go outside, no room to go outside, and is, uh, picks up only about a yard on that carry. Third down and nine. Marino's attempt to go downfield just once, and it was intercepted. Third and nine. A lot of time. Out of the backfield of Thomas. Got the first down. Off to the 40, and hit and dropped near the 44-yard line. So once again, Marino afforded the time to wait for the back to circle in out of the backfield. Hits Brian Thomas for a gain out to the 44 and a first down. Just excellent protection this time. Marino goes back, has a lot of time to look. He hits number 44, Brian Thomas across the middle. He gets away from Jim Dumont, the outstanding linebacker. Picks up excellent yards and a first down. Tackle was made that time by number 37, Bob Campaglio. So a good job. And now, Pitt will go to a three wide receiver. Back to throw as Marino. He looks, he fires, and it is caught by Dawkins. 35, he's down to the 32-yard line. They went to the three-wide receiver offense with very confident in there, and they hit Julius Dawkins on the slant over the middle. Dawkins gets a first down to the 32-yard line. Just a, an excellent call and something that we haven't seen today. Marino again back with plenty of protection. Hits Julius Dawkins. Dawkins for a first down, a big gain across the middle. Excellent reception, excellent throw by Marino. Once again, three wide receiver. John Brown, the tight end, now comes out of the slot and goes in tight. Moving on the offensive line, flip the cup, and he's got a 25 and down to the 23-yard line. Again, the quick flip, this time to Barry Compton. Just a little slant over the middle, and it's a gain down to the 23-yard line. It'll be second down and about a yard and a half to go for the first. From the slot position, number 19, Barry Compton, a good reception, a good gain of eight yards. He was the man responsible for the last reception. He screened up one of the defensive players in order for Dawkins to make that outstanding catch just to play before. Bartola got the first down. Big hole, 15. He's down near the 10 yard line. And the Pitt Panthers have suddenly come alive and they're beginning to grind out the yard and through the air and on the ground. But it'll be first down and 10 at the 11 yard line. Just a tremendous thrust this time by DeBartolo and the offensive line of Pitt. They're moving that defensive line off the line of scrimmage. DeBartolo makes another excellent run. Looks like he might go all the way, but is tackled on the 11 yard. Another first down for Pitt. First down and 10, Brian Thomas comes back in the game as they go to the pro set now. Thomas got a big hole over center and gets down to the six yard line. And the pit offensive line is beginning to take control of this football game. Gain of five, second down and five. The offensive line is moving off the mark a lot quicker than they did in the first quarter. They are controlling that line of scrimmage. That time, Brian Thomas uh, really uh, didn't have much of room to run, but he picked up about three or four yards on his own. 
Now second down and about five to go. Hitton now takes out Dawkins, goes to the double tight end and comes out in the power eye to the left. White Collins switches now to make a power eye right and Collins comes in motion near side. Reno to throw. He's got all the time in the world. He's hit. Spins away. He fires in the end zone. Touchdown. Hit. Wayne D. Bart told the fullback had to break the pattern because of the scramble. He came back for the football. Marino found him for a six-yard touchdown throw, and Pitt is on the board. That's why this, this quarterback is an All-American and a possible Heisman Trophy winner. It's back a lot of time. He feels pressure from Rustemeyer. He's able to scramble out. He spots Steve Bartolo just in the end zone, delivers the pass right on the money, and touchdown for Pitt. Stuffy effort attempts the extra point. It's good. And so Pitt goes on a 95-yard drive. Completing it with the Marino to Deep Artola pass. We've got 3.44 to play in the half, and Pitt has gone ahead of Rutgers 7 to 3. 95 yard drive for Pitt in nine plays. I think the big play, Tom, was the third down and nine screen pass circled into Brian Thomas, where Dumont hit him, which would have been shy of the first down. Uh, Thomas eluded the tackle, picked up the first down. Then they hit Dawkins with a slant over the middle down to the 32, and they were on their way. Without a doubt, that was the key play, and it caused that excellent scrambling and, uh, by uh, Marino on the goal line and Deep Bartolo sliding out in the flat uh, for the touchdown. Schubert kicks off. Carl Howard goes back five yards deep. He'll stay. And Rutgers will start out first down and 10. That, by the way, was Marino's 22nd touchdown pass of the year, and this is the eighth game of the year. However, Marino did not play in one game, so he has those 22 touchdown passes in six games and almost two quarters of football. And, and uh, the previous record for a year was 15. So he uh, is having himself quite a season. Just amazing stats, uh, over 1,600 yards now passing, and as you said, in six and a half games. Just an outstanding All-American player. Give inside to Hooper. He's not going anywhere. However, a flag is thrown in the middle of a pile. Let's wait and see. But Hooper will lose a half yard on the play. Bring up second down. But again, there is a flag on the play as we get the call. Face mask called on Pitt, and that'll be a first down for Rutgers. So Pitt continues to make mistakes, and they have really struggled uh, in the past couple of weeks and certainly have struggled in this half. And I, I want your opinion on something, Tom. Here, Rutgers uh, has played their hearts out for nearly two quarters of football, and yet they may find themselves down at the half. I would think that it's imperative that they at least keep the ball for the 340, and they do not allow Pitt to get any further ahead by the time the half's over. I agree, Stan. As a matter of fact, this is probably the most important series thus far for Rutgers to establish some kind of consistency on offense. Pitt has just scored, what, 95 yards, as you said. It's very important that they gain, gain some yards and get a couple of first downs to get the momentum a little bit back to them. Well, they got one by flag there. Hudak facing a blitz. He fires in the flat and is almost intercepted at the line of scrimmage. Tim Lewis came up and almost made the interception. The pass thrown off the flat. It'll go incomplete to bring up second down and 10 yards to go. Outstanding play by the defensive back Tim Lewis that time because the, the man was open in the flat in the last second. Number 26 Lewis came up, knocked the pass down, incomplete. It'll bring up a second and 10 for Rutgers. And Pitt is, there's Wayne D. Bartola who scored the touchdown on that six yard touchdown catch. Pitt has now gone to a nickel, bringing out defensive tackle Tom Johnson to bring in Troy Hill, second down. Here's the draw play. Ray gets out to near the 37-yard line for a gain of a bit more than three to bring up third down and seven yards to go. And as Tom pointed out earlier, very critical play in the football game, although it wouldn't appear to be so on the surface. But if they are forced to give up the football, Pitt will have at least two and a half minutes to come back and perhaps go in 10 to 3 or maybe 14 to 3. And then you'd have to believe the Stars would go out of Rutgers. So a big play here. Third down. Another blitz. No contact, however. And again, movement. Offside. Offside. They're going to call it. And it's going to hurt Pitt because it would have been fourth down as Hooper has hit and hammered for a loss in his own backfield. But offside will make it a third down and two. And, of course, that's a whole different ball game. No doubt about it. That time, uh, as you said, the first time, no contact. He got back, but uh, you'll see the the pit linebacker, Sinceri. Sinceri, number 66, the very aggressive player. He'll come across the line of scrimmage, 
at the snap, offsides against Pitt, and it would have been a big loss for Hooper, but uh, the penalty nullifies that loss. So it's now third down and a long two yards to go. I guess you have an advantage as a linebacker if you start the play behind the quarterback. That makes yes. it a bit easier, doesn't yes, it? Yes, it does. <laughs> it gives you about a two or three yard running start. And a better field of vision, of course. Third down and two. Hudak's going to throw. He's got room to run if he wants. He fires man open and is caught by Johnson at the 45-yard line of the first down for the Scarlet Knights. He threw into coverage, but he managed to get it to Eric Johnson. Johnson makes the reception, a gain to the pit 45 and a first down. Pretty impressed with this young quarterback, number number 14, Keith Hudak. You'll see him roll out. He sends Albert Ray in the flat, but number 87, Eric Johnson, coming across. He throws on the run, delivers a perfect pass with three defenders from Pitt around him. Eric Johnson, a great reception and a great throw for a first down for Rutgers. That was two points for a takedown in case you're wrestling fans and a tackle by Pappy Thomas. Ball at the 44-yard line. Ray motion left out of the shotgun. Hudak throws in the flat, underthrown. He had a man open. Albert Ray at the 40, but he underthrew him. It'll be second down and 10 yards to go. 157 to play in the first half, and Pitt holding on to a very shaky 7-3 lead. Good coverage that time, Stan, uh, by number 66, Sanceri. Uh, he's quite a large individual, and he has to cover Albert Ray, who's got about 4-4, 4-5 speed, and that time he was right on him. An excellent play uh, and an outstanding play all day by uh, 66, Sanceri. It's obvious they had that play well scouted, too, Tom, because they tried it earlier, and Cranach came up to make, uh, he was called for pass interference, but he did have the play well covered, so that little flare on that motion, uh, they seem to have the number on that, second and ten. Draw play, Rays got room to run, but it's closed quickly. Hole opened initially, but it was closed very quickly on the play. J.C. Pelosi and Rick Cranach make the tackle. It'll bring up third down and eight yards to go, and Pitt is going to call for a timeout. They feel they can hold them on third and eight and perhaps get some time back when they get the football. It shows the respect that they have uh, for their defense and also for their offense, but uh, it's, it's amazing that uh, almost every play, and there we see the stats of Albert Ray, he needs 77 yards rushing to break 2,000 yards for his career, an outstanding career here at Rutgers. He was one of the outstanding backs along with Blackwell last year that uh, has done so much for this Rutgers team, but as I was saying, on defense, uh, you probably could call 66 and Sari or 56 55, Frantic, almost every play seems to be in on every play that that, that Pitt makes on defense. Well, the defensive scheme, as you know, Tom, and an Oklahoma defense, the front line, they're designed to keep the guards off the linebackers. And an Oklahoma defensive linebacker should make 70% of your tackles. And the Pitt defensive line is very strong. It's interesting because these are all underclassmen in there. The starting five from last year, all of them are playing in the National Football League right now. So these kids didn't have much of a chance to play last year. Bill Neal right here with the Giants. Greg Meisner with the LA Rams. Of course, Hugh Green, Ricky Jackson, Boyarski. Back to throw, blitz on. Hudak gets away, fires in the flat and is incomplete. Pass intended for Dwayne Hooper, although initially he wanted to go to Albert Ray. What a blitz put on by Bill Maz, Michael Woods. The linebackers were coming. He had no chance to complete the ball. Tremendous inside pressure. And, of course, Bill Maz comes in on the blitz. And Hudak did an excellent job of getting away from the blitz man and throwing the ball out to Albert Ray, or actually 43 Hooper, who dropped the ball. But uh, had he been able to catch that ball, there was too many pit defenders for him to go any place. So it was better that he did not receive that, that pass. This one will be angling for the corner, obviously, on this play. Good snap. He gets it away, kicks it down the center. Flynn fields it at the 18-yard line. He'll get up near the 19, and that's about it. But really, Liska didn't do his job because he kicked a line drive right to the safety man. If he makes the same kind of kick, Tom, in the corner, he accomplishes what he wanted to do. And also, there was not too much height on that ball. Not a chance for for the Rutgers team to get down uncovered. The ball was a line drive, a chance for a, a slight run back, and not really that bad a field position. Considering where he kicked the ball, it, uh, it gives Pitt a little chance to maybe uh, put some more points on his board. Well, Pitt has a minute and 30 seconds to move the football. They have two timeouts left. Reno, draw play. DeBartola got a hole, makes a nice cut. 30, out to the 34-yard line. 15-yard gain. And a first down, Dan Errico, cornerback, finally came up and made the tackle. But that's the kind of yardage Pitt wanted to pick up on a running play. 
Thomas comes off. They go to the free wide receiver offense that got that first down at their own 34. Marino now will throw. Out the flat to DeBartolo. Gets a gain out to the 38-yard line. Got only four. Going to bring up second down and six. The clock rolling at a minute and five seconds to play in the half. Pitt trying to scramble around and get something going. They are staying with that three wide receiver. Slot to the left and right. It's a double wing formation. The clock now under a minute. Second and six. Over the middle. It is caught. Very confident at the 50. He's down to the 46-yard line of Rutgers. That'll stop the clock of the first down with 50 seconds to play. Pitt will not use a timeout. They move the chains quickly. And they are driving for field goal position. The clock now starts to roll. 47 seconds to play in the half. Again, the double wing. Again, Marino to throw. He's looking deep. He's firing deep. Falcons open. Incomplete at the four-yard line. John Brown and Dawkins in the same area together. Brown was the man close to the pass. He was open, but it was overthrown. That's exactly right, Stan. As a matter of fact, Marino looked to the right, and then he came back to the left. Brown was wide open. Had he thrown the ball about a second sooner, the ball would have been caught for a touchdown, but the defensive man was able to get over it, get his hand in the vision of, of light, and therefore the incomplete pass. Saw Marino shouting at Brown. I'm not so sure that he didn't run the wrong pattern. There were two receivers in the same area. Second down and 10, 39 seconds to play as Marino goes back to throw. Over the middle. Will they rule it a catch? They will at the 31-yard line. Pass is caught by Dwight Collins, who appears to be holding his leg or his knee. The first down on the 16-yard gain will stop the clock with 33 seconds, but now they'll take a look at Dwight Collins. Dwight Collins, an all-state player, hurt his hamstring and missed a few games in the middle of the year. Again, from the double wing, Marino back, plenty of time to throw. Sledding padded across the middle. Ball was definitely caught. Defensive man came down on on the leg. It looked like it might be an injury to the ankle. Collins last year as a freshman caught 10 touchdown passes. That is a record that Julius Dawkins has tied. And Collins is going to be helped off. Now, I don't know. He has had the hamstring problem, but that doesn't look like a hamstring problem, Tom. I would say uh, a uh, knee from, from here uh, or an ankle. Let's hope not, but it looks like a lower part of his leg. And as you said, he had been hampered by hamstring. And Possibly today was the first time in a while he's been 100%. Makes an outstanding catch and uh, is injured again. Well, here's a mistake by Pitt. The clock was stopped on the injury in the first down, and yet they stood in the huddle and they wasted 10 seconds. They should have been at the line of scrimmage or used one of their timeouts. Clock is under 20 seconds. Marino back to throw. Blitz is on. Look at the time. He fires over the middle. Caught by John Brown. Touchdown. Dan Marino. It's John Brown over the middle for a touchdown, his 23rd touchdown pass of the year, and Pitt may well have taken strong command of this game with only 13 seconds to play in the half. Again, an outstanding pass by Marino, back with plenty of time to pass. John Brown just streaked down the middle, made a little turn towards the post. The ball was delivered right on target, a touchdown for Pitt, and a chance to move out to a 14-3 lead. Everett to attempt the kick. It is good. And Pitt marches 81 yards in a minute and 17 seconds. And Marino with his second touchdown pass today, this time a 31-yarder to John Brown. Again, Marino going back, no pressure at all. Spots John Brown right down the middle, delivers the ball right on target, wide open, makes a little cut here to evade one of the Rutgers defensive backs and goes into the end zone for the touchdown and a 13-point for Pitt. The extra point was good, and it's now Pitt 14, Rutgers 3. And the defender on the play was defensive end Andy Carino in that five-man line. Defense, the ends are responsible normally in the flat, but there was Carino, a defensive end, responsible for the coverage. And, of course, he was beaten badly on the play. Sure was. And uh, they've been dropping their ends off into the nickel defense, uh, especially that particular drive, because they knew that Pittsburgh would pass the ball. But Marino, with excellent protection and an excellent arm, and, of course, some excellent receivers, was able to deliver and the big touchdown and really a very important touchdown for Pitt and a very, very devastating touchdown on the part of Rutgers. It's a good point. Uh, you have to believe now that Starch has been taken out of Rutgers, even though they've fallen away in numerous opportunities, especially the one by Hooper on the five-yard line. If they go in at halftime, 7-3, uh, and they would have received the second-half kickoff, not at all in bad shape, but now down 14-3, to three, you have to wonder. Exactly, Stan, and I, I think the... 
the pit team is really starting to exert himself on the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be pretty hard for Ruckus to come back. Everett to kick. High end over end, coming deep and going through the end zone. And so Rutgers will have 13 seconds, presumably, to fall the football and get out of the first half, trailing by 11 points. And looking at the other side of the coin, not only is the starch taken out of Rutgers by that touchdown, but this is a pit team that perhaps there's Dwight Collins, uh, who is uh, at least able to walk on that leg, being taken to the locker room before the halftime. But a pit football team that perhaps was beginning to wonder about itself after playing poorly against Syracuse and Boston College did not play well in the first quarter. But now they're coming on a bit and may have gotten back the confidence that they have had earlier in the year, and that goes with being the number one team. Hooper out to the 25-yard line, and that will end the first half. So Rutgers had the better of it in the first quarter, but Pitt, with two touchdowns in the second quarter, has now jumped out of the lead as the first half ends. And the score, the Pitt Panthers lead the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers 14-3. Rutgers. There you see Jackie Sherrill, who must feel at least a bit better than he did, uh, oh, about a half an hour ago or so, Tom. I wonder if he's a little cold. It's probably 36, 37 degrees down the field, and there is a wind, but uh, I guess when you're ahead 14 to 3, and your team uh, came back so well in the second quarter, you feel a little warmer. Well, that uh, is better than a flask when it comes to warming. <laughs> yep, when you're a coach. Line drive kick coming to Lewis, four yards deep. He'll come out of there. He's out to the 10. Hit. Gets away, gets across the 25 and out to the 27, and a 31-yard return by Tim Lewis on a line drive kick by Falsinelli, and Pitt will start out in good shape in the first half, the second half, and it's obvious now, although we did not get the indication early, that Rutgers won the opening toss but elected to go with a win in the first quarter. Yes, uh, that was very surprising, and uh, the way they were emotionally up, I guess uh, Coach Burns felt that they would be able to exert more more emotion on defense, so we elected to kick to uh, Pitt and take the win. You've inside <coughs> De Bartola. De Bartola's got big yardage across the 35 and to the 36-yard line. Wayne De Bartola, who has become a factor on this football team, not only as a runner, but as a pass catcher. He's caught a touchdown pass today. The gain is out from the 27-yard line to the 36. It's a gain of nine. It'll be second down and one yard to go. And as Tom pointed out to you, at the end of the first half. The first series here is critical for both teams, especially for Rutgers. Uh, they have to stop Pitt here now because they haven't been able to stop Pitt in, in quite a while. And should Pitt take this ball in for a score, I think uh, Rutgers will be here for a very long afternoon. Reno throws to the sideline. Wide open is John Brown. He's at the 50 into Rutgers territory and knocked out of bounds. The 46-yard line as the Panthers, even though they are against the wind, begin to open it up. Again, uh, 55, Andy Carino. You'll see him drop back into pass coverage this time. Reno back under no pressure at all. Spots John Brown in the open flat. Delivers the ball again right on ta target. Uh, Carino makes the tackle, but not after a, a long game in the first down for Pitt. At the 46-yard line is Frank Burns and his coaching staff look on. Pitch wide, Brian Thomas looks for a block. He gets one to the 40 and inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. And had he not stumbled, he had a long way to run. And Pitt's offensive line, about the middle of the second quarter, really began to dominate. The Panthers' two scoring drives were of 95 and 81 yards, so they have not been fluke touchdowns. Keith Wotes will finally brought Brian Thomas down, who is looking for another 100-yard game. And the second down and five yards to go for Pitt. Thomas tries to get outside. He's hit, and he's dropped. But he picks up a couple. It'll be third down and one for Sear. Made the tackle for the Scarlet Knights. Third down and one yard to go. Just underway in the second half. Actually, Jim uh, Dumont, number 53, tremendous penetration across the line. Uh, kept uh, Brian Thomas from really getting started. And as you said, uh, very short gain uh, by Thomas on that play. That's Danny Daniels, who is the backup quarterback. He got a chance to start a game this year. Marino had a shoulder injury against West Virginia. Daniels played the entire game through six passes, completed one. Unfortunately, it was to a West Virginia guy. Third down and one. Pitch wide. Thomas, first down, 35, 
down to the 31 yard line and near the 30 and the Panthers are starting to grind it out first down and 10 at the Rutgers 30 yard line and you'd think from an emotional standpoint if Pitt is able to march 83 yards for a touchdown it might be lights out on the Scarlet Knights just a reverse pivot uh, pitch out to Brian Thomas pretty good block by number 31 Deep Bartow. not only is he a great uh, runner and a great receiver but an excellent blocker and the first down another first down for Pitt He's also a pre-med student. He is not a dumbbell by any stretch. Thomas with a big hole inside across the 25 and down to the 24-yard line. The ball came loose, but he was down, and it's a gain of five big yards. It'll bring up second down and five. And thus far, Pitt ripping off big chunks of yardage. Jackie Sherrill, windblown, and that, again, you're watching Andy Urbanic give the calls on what play to call, although, again, Marino has a great deal of latitude he is allowed to check off and does so quite frequently. Second and five, Thomas again. Cut back, 15. He's down to the 10-yard line and a first down for the Pitt Panthers as he picks up big yardage for the first down of the 10. Again, Stan, uh, completely on his own. He, the play was designed to go around the left side. An off-tackle play, possibly to go outside, but he sees that there's no room there. And with that great lateral movement, he's able to cut back against the grain, picks up excellent yards. Thought he might go all the way, but is finally tackled on about the 10-yard line. First down and goal for the Pitt Panthers. Thomas again, got a hold to the five. And I think on this drive, which began at the 27-yard line, Tom Pitt only once has run a play that has gained less than five yards. This is an amazing effort by the offensive line. And, of course, when you got great backs by Bartolo, like Bartolo and Brian Thomas, all you have to do is sustain that block for a second, uh, allowing the, the runner to get into the hole. And once he gets in the hole, he's able to cut and pick up extra yards. Two excellent uh, backs in this pit backfield. High backfield. Compton now starting in there for Collins. Second down and goal. Thomas to the other side. And Thomas cuts to the outside. And he is in for the touchdown. Ryan Thomas screwed to the outside. Got over the line for the touchdown. His first touchdown of the game. And Pitt has just ripped off an 83-yard drive that took four minutes and one second for the touchdown. Again from the I formation. Marino, reverse pivot, pitch to Brian Thomas, has a chance to cut back at the win, but decides to go outside and outruns the secondary of Rutgers and slides into the end zone for another pit touchdown. Everett checks the point, he is up, a flag down. Kick is good, but there is a flag down on the play. Wait to see the call. They're talking with Danny Daniels, who will decline the penalty quite obviously. Offside on Rutgers, it will be declined, and so Pitt on the first drive of the second half is March 80 or other 73 yards for a touchdown and they lead Rutgers 21 to 3. Who did what? Well, it's going to be Rutgers who's going to call for the illegal motion. That'll move them back five to the 21 to make it a second down and 15 yards to go. And again, it is imperative for Rutgers that they have to stay in this game if they get some kind of a drive going now. Pitt cheerleaders are pretty excited about this game now, Stan. They're 21 to 3. They're a little bit happier than they were in the first half. Well, actually, they're moving to keep warm. I don't think it has anything to do with the game. I don't even know what the, what the score is. Second down and 15. Out of the eye. Kudak play fake. He's rushed. He throws the bomb. It's overthrown, and it's almost intercepted by Troy Hill. Threw it into double coverage. The pass was intended for Andrew Baker, but... Actually, Hill was the only man open on the play. Actually, the two closest receivers to that was number nine, uh, Pappy Thomas and Troy Hill. See, Hudak, he makes a good move to step up uh, to get away from the pressure, delivers the ball, but really no chance for the completion. Very fortunate the ball was not intercepted. A good shot at the interception was number 22, Troy Hill, but also there was number nine, Pappy Thomas. So it's third down and 15 yards to go for Rutgers. They'll work out of the shotgun this time. Break the double wing with Ray coming in motion right toward you. Throws out in the flat and is overthrown. And of course, that kind of pattern, it's third down and 15 yards to go. Even if you complete it to Albert Ray, it's a five-yard game. Still brings up fourth. So now, Rutgers will be forced to punt 
and the ebb and flow and tide of this game is beginning to wash right over the heads of the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. They, they don't seem to be as emotional as they were in the first half. And of course, they are trailing by 21 to 3. Two long drives by Pittsburgh sort of sort of has, has taken the starch out of, out of Rutgers. Well, that one at the end of the half really was the crusher. We're looking for a turning point in the game. This good, good rush on him. He gets it away, and it's a very short punt, but a good roll coming inside the pit 40. Down to the 35-yard line, and if the wind blows, we may be here all day. <laughs> Down to the 32-yard line, so a line drive, short kick. Pretty good one, coming from the 21-yard line all the way down to the 31. It's a 48-yard kick, and a pretty good effort there by Liska. It'll improve his average somewhat. And Frank Burns huddling with his assistant coaching, wondering, what do we do now except find the athletic director who scheduled the game? <laughs> this is the first time they have uh, ever played each other, Pitt and Rutgers. Pitt, which has struggled greatly the last couple of weeks and did indeed struggle for the first quarter and a half, now seems to have come alive. Working out of the pro set, Compton right, Dawkins left. And Marino will throw. Blitz on. He's hit. He's dropped. Back at the 16-yard line, Mike Rustemeyer made the initial hit, and the surge was backed up by Ken Versier. And that is one of the very few times all year that Marino not only has been sacked, but has been touched. Great rush this time by number 91, Ken Versier, and number 64, Rustemeyer, put on tremendous pressure. And, of course, Rutgers not being a team that blitzes a lot, I, I think that the, that the anticipation of them not blitzing... Uh, enabled them to get in there on the blitz and uh, therefore they lost to Marino and it's a big loss. Now one thing might get Rutgers back in the game, a turnover. Marino to throw on second long screen pass, Thomas, 20, 25, still on his feet, he's at the 30 and out to the 33 yard line. You know Stan, just an excellent call, uh, you have a big rush and you come back with that screen uh, pass uh, to uh, stymie that, that rush and again, Rutgers not a blitzing team as we see the play again, Marino will go back it comes off to Thomas. Good screen, good blocking the head. Thomas will cut across the grain, picks up excellent yards, gets him back into the third and about nine situation. They come with 16 on the play. Third down and nine. Rush on again, flip over the middle, incomplete, intended for Brian Thomas. But good coverage on the play by Dumont as it goes off his fingertips, and it'll be fourth down and ten. Watch this. Watch how the pit punt team rushes out of the field. They want to get it over with in a hurry. Hepler to punt. High floating kick. Coming to Seeger who calls for fair kick. Fumbles the football and Pitt is recovered. And there you go. Those are the kind of breaks that separate the team. Some of the turnovers that they might rule. Well they might rule here that they did not give him room right. to make the catch. Exactly. Harold Young is the man who called for the fair catch and fumbled. See who stays on the field. They're going to give it to Rutgers, it looks like, because the, no, the pit offense is going back on the field now. Pitts football. Ken Bersier discussing it with the official. But there was Rutgers' opportunity to maybe get back in the football game finally holding Pitt on a series after the Panthers had scored three straight times. They had had the football. Then Harold Young, who was a freshman, makes the big mistake of fumbling. And now a touchdown would lock it up. Well, first down and 10. Pitt's in good shape. The Rutgers 33. D. Bartola delayed to the 30-yard line and a gain of three. will make it second down and seven yards to go as Carino and Dumont come in to make the tackle. Again, Stan, it looks like they're going back to that running offense that was so effective on the last drive. They're going to run the ball. They're ahead 21-3, to 8.30 to go in the third quarter. They seem to be dominating the line of scrimmage. And like the first half, when Pitt gave away the ball, they seem to be getting the ball back on turnovers now. But the difference in Pitt is that they're capitalizing on the turnovers. Absolutely. Receiver split either side. Motion Thomas to the near side. Marino play pick and rolling. Stops, he fires in the middle, and is caught down at the 20-yard line, and it'll be a first down for the Panthers at the 19-yard line as Julius Dawkins makes the reception. That'll be good for a game to the 19 and a first down. Speak about a cool customer under pressure. Marino here takes the, the bootleg and rolls out to his right, looking right. He looks left, 
throws on the run across his body, delivers a perfect pass for the completion to Dawkins and another first down for Pitt. Seven minutes and 50 seconds to play in the third quarter. Brian Thomas with a big hole over left tackle. Gets down inside the 15 to the 14-yard line, a gain of five. Pitt really at this point can do whatever it wants to on offense. Second down and five yards to go. Pitt at the Rutgers 14. Speaking about offense and a great offensive line, I guess they average about 6'4", 268 across that front. And as you said, most of them are underclassmen, very young, and a really young up-and-coming team of the future. Pitt starts only two seniors on offense. Ryan Thomas got a hole to the 10 and down to the 7-yard line. That will be yet another first down for Pitt. And the offensive line really turned the tide in this game, really showing their superiority. And Rutgers, a team that has been susceptible to the run all season long, Pitt beginning to take advantage. It'll be first down and goal just inside the 8-yard line. Pitt once again goes with the double tight end. Julius Dawkins comes to the sideline and will watch here as they often do when they go to the double tight end. They will line up White Collins in a power eye. Of course, Collins is out of the game. And now Pitt's going to call for a timeout. And I think that's the problem because Collins normally runs out of the power eye and they realize he's not here. So they're going to have to change their formation. So Marino will come to the sideline and ask Jackie Sherrill what to do next. Of course, uh, Pitt likes that uh, power eye when they get down the, close to the goal line. And they will run and also will pass against that formation. And uh, statistics show that they have probably uh, thrown, what, four times as many touchdown passes as they have rushed for. So yes. they can throw the ball down in this close uh, quarters. And they will, too. Let me ask you this, Tom. Many of the New York media members are here seeing Pitt for the first time. They really have not had TV exposure this year. Many of them have voted for Pitt number one without ever having seen them. Having watched them now and struggle and play a rather weak first quarter and a half, what do you think of them? Well, I think they're a very powerful team. Uh, they have so many uh, key players on offense. Uh, they have a great fullback, a great outside runner, and of course, a, a really terrific quarterback in Marino. Their offensive line is outstanding. The defensive line is outstanding. They are right now the best team in the nation, I think. Well, and don't you have to standardize your opinion by considering the opponent? Well, yes, but I also consider the, the game and that Rutgers had so many chances. They are a team that held together, and when they needed to make the big play, they did make the big play. A terrific drive at the end of the second quarter and also the ter terrific drive in the third quarter. They show that they are a team that uh, can come back from adversity and put on points on the board. Ryan Thomas out of the power line gets to the five and stumbles near the goal line. He'll be out of mark that abounds about the one-yard line as Brian Thomas picks up six yards to the one-yard line. Thomas well over the 100-yard mark on the afternoon. In the power eye formation, just the pitch out to Thomas. Again, off the tackle spot. He slides out to the outside, makes a great effort, spins away from a tackle, and gets all the way down to the one-yard line. So it'll be second to go for the one-yard line. Again, they operate out of the power line. Thomas... He's hit at the goal line and stopped. He did not get in. Let him bring up third down and goal. And one of the things that Pitt likes to do here is to throw the alley-oop to Dwight Collins. Collins is a 6'3 and a half All-State basketball player and can leap into the sky, but of course he is not in there. They like to throw the alley-oop and just have him out jump a quarterback, but they won't do it here. Third down, and well, you can see the length of the football for a touchdown. Marino sneaks, touchdown Pitt. Marino got on the stack and put the ball over the goal line. And of course, all you have to do is cross the plane. And a touchdown, two rushing, two passing. And something that the Marino doesn't do too often, but you'll see him over the pile, picks up that one yard, little spin out, but he's over for the touchdown and the 27.4 Pitt. 32-yard drive and seven plays that followed the fumbled punt by Harold Young. And now Everett will attempt to tack on the extra point. He's three for three on the afternoon. It is up and good. And now Pitt has extended their lead to 28 to three. They have scored 28 unanswered points. 6.06 to play in the third quarter. And the number one Pitt Panthers lead the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers 28 to three. Maybe the longevity factor. Offensive linemen in the NFL just seem to play on the 
Oh, he's doing a great job on offense. If he can play as well as defense, he might be able to use him both ways. Why well, don't have to feed him? He's only 19 years old. Marino to throw, fires out the flat, and is caught by John Brown, who's hit hard at the 30-yard line and run out of bounds near the 29-yard line. That'll be good for a first down. So Marino completes the pass to tight end John Brown, who's caught a touchdown pass for 32 yards today, and it's good for a first down. Again, a, an excellent reception and a real smooth delivery by Marino. Effortlessly throws out to John Brown, number 89, for the first down for Pitt. Dan Errico made the tackle for Rutgers. Another pit first down. This time we find Brian Thomas in a slot to the left. Have not seen that formation today. Marino once again looking sideline. Throws. It is incomplete. Intended for Julius Dawkins. Thrown a bit low at the 15-yard line. Second down. It was a bit low, but it was catchable. Number 80 Dawkins usually catches those passes. The ball was thrown a little below, but he should have been able to hold on to that ball. And had he been able to hold on to that ball, it would have been another first down for Pitt. You know, Stan, looking at Marino and the way he throws, and he has a quick delivery. He's a little reminiscent of Terry Bradshaw. He has that flick of the wrist and that tremendous arm. Of course, Terry Bradshaw plays for another Pittsburgh team. I forget their name at the moment. DeBartolo to the 25 and the 20-yard line, and very close to a first down will be about a half-yard shot. Pitt coaches upstairs who call the plays, both offensively and defensively, down on the field quite relaxed now, don't they? Yep. I think I might be also as we pull back from that shot. And that's right next door to us. They let us call a few plays. Why not? <laughs> Just switch the wires and at this point I think anybody can call a play. <laughs> De Bartola over left guard down to the 16 and a first down. First down and goal. I, uh, first down and 10 at the 16. I started to mention that Dan Marino's a great all-around athlete at the time. He was drafted in the baseball draft with the Kansas City Royals, and he was drafted, I believe, in the fourth round. And Marino had said if he had gone in the first round, which, of course, means you get a bigger bonus in baseball, and he may have gone with baseball, a great hitter and a shortstop. I had heard that, and I also know he's uh, quite a good student. Yes, he is. He's a Pittsburgh native. In fact, he grew up about five uh, minutes from the Pitt campus. Pass to the flat, complete to Brian Thomas inside the 10-yard line at the 8-yard line. It's a gain of 8 yards. It'll be third down and two. The more I watch him, the more I'm impressed by his tremendous delivery. That time it was a short pass. He has a great touch, long or short, delivers the pass right on the money to number 44, Brian Thomas. And again, uh, a long gain, uh, bringing up a second and two. Running Thomas out of the slot. And again, we had not seen this formation. I do not remember seeing it all season long. Marino. Rush throws in the end zone. Incomplete. Intended for Barry Compton. We may get a holding call. Coming up on the secondary, Carl Howard, number 26. As the flag came late, that's going to give Pitt a first down and goal on the penalty. A penalty against Rutgers. Uh, drill in 28 to 3. And uh, to have the holding penalty give them an automatic first down. As we look on uh, the sidelines to the brain trust of Rutgers, head coach Frank Burns, just an outstanding record at uh, Rutgers. 70 wins, 26 losses in his ninth year at Rutgers. Uh, a very outstanding coach in his own right. Power eye now to the right. Compton is the deep man in that eye formation. Compton in motion now to the near side. Marino to DeBartola, cracks near the goal line and he's in for the touchdown. Wayne Bartolo with his second touchdown of the game, a two, <coughs> pardon me, a two-yard run, and Pitt has gone on top now, 34 to three. No deception at all, just from the power eye, the straight handoff to Bartolo, but the lead back leading the way, puts his shoulder down, crosses the goal line for the touchdown, and a 34 point for Pittsburgh. 57-yard drive, nine plays, grounded out slowly, Stuffy Everett with the extra point attempt. It's up. And it is good. And so Pitt is now up their lead to 35 to 3. They were down 3 0 very late in the second quarter, but now with 12 01 to play in the football game, it is Pitt 35 and Rutgers 3. This thing is open. We'll kick off. He kicks it high and deep again. He's with the win out of the end zone. He should get at least a point and a half because that thing went right through the goalposts and almost out of the stadium, almost through the corner out of the stadium. 
So Rutgers will take over from their own 20 with 12-0-1 to play in the football game. I guess you don't realize how strong the wind is down the field. Except here, it doesn't seem to be that strong, but uh, it's obvious that the ball is carried tremendously uh, when it goes from the east to west. Well, Ralph Leak is now the quarterback. He had been the starter for much of the season, but Frank Burns decided to go with Keith Hudak against Alabama, and again today uh, versus Pitt. So Ralph Leak will get his opportunity. And Leak will throw on first down. Fires over the, uh, to the sideline, and it is caught. Andrew Baker. And Baker is pushed out of bounds near the 40-yard line, out of bounds at the 38. It's a gain of 18 and a first down for the Scarlet Knights. Andrew Baker is the freshman receiver. Made a nice catch that time on the play-action pass. A good call on first down for the Scarlet Knights. But again, uh, they have to pass to try to get some points on the board. They are behind 35-3. to three. Not much chance to get back into this game, but at least they could uh, make this a little bit more presentable. One of the few first downs that Rutgers has gotten here in the second half. I can recall just one other one. Leak and an all-out blitz by Pitt. He's got Luke Run. He'll take off. 40, 45, knocked out of bounds near midfield at the 48-yard line. He'll be very close to a first down. That's something that Hudak did not do. There were occasions when he had a chance to scramble, did not take the opportunity. Leak does here. Leak, and again, Leak makes it tremendous. He goes back on the play-action pass. Uh, too much pressure, steps up, decides to run the ball, does an excellent job, and as you said, Stan, picks up the first down. A great effort, a great signal effort by uh, Leak, the quarterback. So two first downs on two plays for the Scarlet Knights under the direction of quarterback Ralph Leak. Joe Burke is the deep man in the eye. Bryant Moore, the front man. Play fake. Leak throw, or tries to throw. He's hit and drop for a loss. Coming in was Al Wenglikowski, number six. Leak did, as he should have, stepped up in the pocket, but Wenglikowski fought the pressure and made the sack. Just no chance to deliver the ball. Again, the uh, play action fake really did not fool the pit line. They ran on him too strong. He decides to hold the ball, which is a good move on his part, and takes the sack. Tony Sella was man-on-man on, man on Wenglikowski, sophomore. When you look at the size of Pitt's defensive ends, they're not that big, but they have flat responsibility on pass cover, so they also have to be mobile. Here comes the blitz. Leak throws, and it is incomplete. Baker was open, but again, the blitz by strong safety Pat McQuaid came in, forced to throw early, incomplete. It'll be third down and 16 yards to go. Of course, Pitt knows that uh, Ruckus is going to be passing, so they have an all-out blitz, and that time Leak had really no chance to deliver the pass. There was a man open, but the tremendous pressure did not allow him to hit this man in the open field. Pitt has 23 first downs. Rutgers has 11, which means that Rutgers has had three in the second half, and two of them have come on this series. So I was right. They did only have one going into the series. Look at the blitz. Look out. He's gone. Phil Maz, number 71. Coming in to make the initial hit. Also in on the play was Michael Woods, and it was absolutely no chance for Ralph Lee. Just an all-out blitz, as you said, from the shotgun. Really no chance at all. Lee doesn't even have a chance to put the ball up to look downfield. Tremendous pressure by the pit line. Goes Lee for a very big loss, fourth and 28 in the course of the punt. Michael Woods came in. He'll get credit for that sack. Tom Flynn back to receive the punt. Here comes a big rush. Flag is down. Flynn takes it as 36, hit at the 38, gets out to the 39. But again, we have a flag down on the play back at the 20-yard line. But we'll see what the flag is all about. Pitt will have the football, depending on what happened on the flag. It appears to be against Rutgers, and it'll be declined by Pitt. So the Panthers will take over at their own 38-yard line. Procedure on Rutgers is declined. So, 10.23 to play in the football game, and Pitt leads Rutgers 35-3. Dan Marino still in their quarterback for Pitt. Marino is looking for the home run ball, looking for Dawkins. He's open and is knocked away at the last second. An excellent defensive play by Dan Errico to stop a touchdown pass from Marino to Dawkins. Play action pass on the first down. He wanted to hit Dawkins on the long pass, as you said, Dan. And number 20, Danny Errico, who comes right from 
this area, Hackensack, New Jersey, makes an excellent play and almost makes the interception. You see Danny Errico come into the picture just at the, just at the last moment, has his hands on the ball, bobbles it, but is unable to hold it. Incomplete, second and ten for Pitt. Nice play by Errico. Draw play. Deep our toll at the 40. 45. Powers his way out to the 48, very near the first down. Well, Jackie Sherrill attempting that bomb, leading 35 to 3. I guess he says, well, we only need 47 points uh, to tie Clemson last week. So, and Clemson's number two. Either that or he wants to add to the, the stats of uh, Danny Marino. But, you know, Stan, that last play, Deep Bartolo, just a tremendous piece of running. The defensive man had him in the backfield for about a four-yard loss. And all he did was give him that stiff leg and went right through the de defensive man, picked up. Good yardage, almost the first down. They're measuring now for the first down. It is a first down. Just a, a great piece of strong running up the middle by Wayne DiBartolo. DiBartolo, even though he is a fifth-year senior, Tom, sat on the bench last year because Pitt had Randy McMillan, who was the number one draft choice in the Baltimore Colts. And DiBartolo used to come in on third and short just for blocking purposes. But he is another one who has languished behind quality people. Marino to throw, having to play fake over the middle and is caught. 45 yard line and down to the 42 yard line and making the reception, Brian Thomas near the 42 yard line and again very close to a first down. Just a little halfback pass up the middle, a little circle pattern by the halfback. He slips out of the backfield, finds an open seam down the middle. The ball is delivered right on target by Marino and another first down. And we're going to call for the measurement. I think he's got it. Looks like he has it. We'll wait and see. At least the scoreboard is indicating the first down. No, he doesn't. Yes, he does. Okay. Didn't even use the binoculars for that one. <laughs> Good guess, but that. <laughs> so, first down. Pitt now with, uh, again, bringing its starting unit back in the game. It's starting tandem of backfield people in the eye. Thomas is the deep man. Pitch wide to Brian Thomas. 40, 35. Look at the power of Brian Thomas to the 30-yard line and a gain of 12 yards and another first down. Finally Brian tackled. Thomas is really piling up the yardage. Finally tackled by number 91, Brescia. But you see a great effort here on the part of 44, Brian Thomas. We know he has great speed and great mobility, but now he shows us some strength, the great leg drive of Thomas allows him to pick up another first down. Just an excellent run by Byron Thomas. 160 yards now for Brian Thomas. Marino to throw over the middle. Compton at the 10, the 5, touchdown, Barry Compton. Barry Compton with a 30-yard reception. And the Panthers have gone into the 40s, and Barry Compton, who has made acrobatic catches all season long, makes yet another one. It is his third touchdown catch of the year. Great drop back pass. It's a turning pattern. Actually, a crossy pattern by Compton. Makes the reception. He loses number 36. Darryl Clark goes into the end zone at the 41st point for Pittsburgh. Well, Snuffy ever with the point. Then it is now 42 to 3. And so much for not piling it on. So Pitt leads Rutgers 42 to 3. In 1976 for a head coaching job at Washington State. After Pitt won the national championship, Majors went to Tennessee. They called Cheryl back from Washington State, and he has been there since 1977. Has an excellent record and uh, is in definite position now to win the national championship if they can win the remainder of their games. Three regular season. And a fumble, and I believe Pitt has recovered. La Prairie, the new quarterback, fumbles on the first play, and Pitt has recovered at the 16-yard line. So the scoreboard operator has more work to do. Unfortunate, number 43, the freshman Cooper, who has played an outstanding game at the fullback slot, uh, fumbled that particular handoff, and as you said, first down on the 16-yard line, and again, excellent opportunity for Pitt to add to their score. Well, Danny Daniels is now in a quarterback, number seven. 
it back up to Marino. Here's the give inside to Bill Beach, and Beach gets hard yardage down to the 13-yard line. It'll be a gain of three and make it second down and seven yards to go. Marlon McIntyre, one of the running backs, he's an excellent freshman prospect, started the season returning kickoff, seeing some playing time, developed a calcium deposit in his arm, could not bend his arm, and they didn't know whether to redshirt him or not, but it improved without surgery, and so he is uh, eligible for the season. Here's McIntyre. Nice run. Inside the 10, down to the seven yard line. It'll be third down and one yard to go. Nice bit of running that time by McIntyre. He kept his feet and picked up excellent yards, and now they have the third and very short yardage for that first. Start the one game against West Virginia when Marino had the bad shoulder. Threw six passes and did not complete any as the Panthers strictly ran the ball on the ground against West Virginia. McIntyre pitch left. Looks for the first down. He's got that. Marlon McIntyre scoring the first touchdown of his career. Freshman. And it's an eight-yard run for a touchdown. It now is 47 to 3. Have a deception at all, just a straight power play from the reverse pivot. They pitch out to McIntyre. Good lead block by the fullback allows McIntyre to step outside to go into the end zone for the touchdown. And now Pitt has a unsurmountable lead at 47 to 3. You know, if you joined us late, you wouldn't have believed. Well, you thought here's the extra point by Schubert, and it's no good. That's 47 to 3. to throw over the middle intercepted by the Pitt Panthers down to the 25 and inside the 23 yard line and the ball game will end on that note the interception by the Pitt Panthers for Prairie is interception Jackie Sherrill will come out to the middle of the field and look for Frank Burns and the number one jinx did not apply today as Pitt will be number one at least for two weeks Panthers go on to Wallop, the Scarlet Knights of Rutgers. 14 to 3 at the half, but the Panthers came on as Jackie Sherrill and Frank Burns meet in the center of the field. So, the number one ranked Pitt Panthers remain undefeated. They beat Rutgers this afternoon, 47 to 3.